One of our community's favorite events every year is SPAR's July 4th celebration and throwback baseball game. This year we held the 11th annual game. It started 10 years ago by some Springfield residents, Javier Herrera, who is a physician who lives in the neighborhood uh, and a really great catcher, and Dan Blanchard, who at the time lived in Jacksonville, worked for a local television station, and interestingly now lives in New York working for Major League Baseball, uh, came up with the idea to hold a baseball game in Springfield to bring the community together. So again, this is a great um, event with some historic context happening in our neighborhood. They um, designed the game so that people who lived on the east side of Main Street in Springfield and people who lived on the west side of Main Street in Springfield would play against each other. So we have the west side Giants and the east side Reds. Javier um, actually paid for and designed uniforms that are modeled on vintage uniforms, uh, the type of uniforms baseball players actually wore around 1900, 1910, and they play with old equipment, which uh, the guys tell me is very challenging. Most of them grew up uh, playing with aluminum bats and uh, larger gloves, and they play with the small square gloves, uh, wooden bats. But they all thoroughly enjoy it, uh, even when it's 100 degrees outside on July 4th and the neighborhood gathers normally in Clutho Park to watch the game, uh, have picnics. We have uh, an announcer who dresses in a period costume. We always have a performance of the national anthem. We had a, what I thought was a very special one this year. We have a local um, government official or celebrity come out and throw out the first pitch. So we, um, we make it an event uh, that's a lot of fun and people from not just Springfield but all over Jacksonville come out and enjoy the game. This year we, um, had a last minute emergency that led us to move the baseball game, um, but it turned out to be a wonderful opportunity for the players and the fans because we were able to play in J.P. Smalls Park, which is located only about a mile from Clutho Park in the Durkeyville neighborhood of Jacksonville. And it was Jacksonville's original ball stadium. Uh, it had a few different names over the years. I think it was called Durkey Field at one time. The um, Negro League teams from the early 1900s played in that field and many of the most famous baseball players in history played in that stadium on that field. People like Satchel Paige, Jackie Robinson, Hank Aaron, um, and I know my, my son was one of the um, guys who played in the game this year and he was absolutely thrilled to have the opportunity to play somewhere where, where um, you know, his heroes like that had played in the past. One of the new businesses in Springfield is Hyperion Brewing Company. They've only been open a few months, but they um, have become a very important part of the neighborhood. Their owners uh, really fell in love with Springfield because of the July 4th baseball game. They attended that game and um, I think later attended Jacksonville Porch Fest and that's what helped them make the decision to come to Springfield. So this year Hyperion hosted a pre-party before the game and uh, lots of residents gathered there before going over to J.P. Smalls and jointly with SPAR we sponsored a bicycle decorating contest. Not only did they host the pre-party, I think they ended up having a pretty big uh, after game party afterwards because a lot of neighbors headed back over after the game. And the baseball game is sort of this perfect little slice of Americana where you know we're doing this traditional thing, we're celebrating the 4th of July in a way that um, is very sort of wholesome with the baseball game and the picnic, but you look around at our event and it's, um, the, the people that are there don't all look the same, you know, and, and they've come from all, lots of different places, uh, but they all, the people who li live in Springfield who go to the event, all know each other very well, you know, know, know where everybody lives, know their families, care about each other, and it is, it's sort of like a great big family picnic for our neighborhood, and it's a celebration of um, the people in the community and um, how far the neighborhood has come. When events that I help organize in Springfield are over, um, I always have a, a, a mix of feelings. Uh, first, I'm usually exhausted. Uh, but I'm also elated because there's nothing better um, than seeing your neighborhood come together uh, and enjoy something that the whole neighborhood was involved in organizing. Um, in Springfield, when we do events, we typically do them on something of a shoestring, like most nonprofits, we don't have a huge budget. 
say we have different neighbors who pitch in in an amazing variety of ways, uh, whether they serve as our announcer or our organ player or our tuba player, play on the team or volunteer to, to pick up trash. Many, many people in the neighborhood made it happen. And um, the only thing that wasn't a success was the East Side Beat West. <laughs> <laughs> my team didn't win, but they're both they're both my teams, but uh, my home my home team didn't win.